Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor today. I'm so excited because I have a great guest that I want you to meet. Her name is Amy Sorrow, and she is an audiologist, and she has some great knowledge she wants to share with the public. So she's here today, and she's going to talk to you about a couple of different really important subjects about audiology that we really need to know. Um, so Amy, why don't you tell them a little about yourself, what you do, and, and uh, what inspired you to go on this journey? Sure, I'd love to. Well, thanks, Stacy, for having me on. Um, so just to give a little bit of background. So I'm an audiologist, and what got me into audiology, which people will often ask me about too. Um, so I originally studied German, which is a you know foreign language. Um, I spent some time over in Germany teaching English abroad, and then I came back to the US after a few years. And I was looking at going back to school. Originally, I was thinking of speech pathology because it is related to teaching. Yeah. Um, and, but when I was taking some of the post-bachelor coursework, I took an audiology course and I had been interested in, in music and obviously in communication with yeah. um, you know, language teaching. And what really interested me when in one of my classes, they played one of those videos where you're in a cochlear implant session and yeah. the person has it turned on for the first time. And it's right. just so touching to think about what we can do with technology nowadays. And that, that really interested me. Um, and so I did my doctoral program at the University of Iowa and my residency at Mayo Clinic. And then um, I work with patients now, but I also enjoy sharing information with people about how hearing affects their overall health and well-being. Yeah. So, you know, how does hearing affect our overall, you know, overall health and well-being? Because I don't think people realize how important, you know, our sensories are and how by not being able to hear 100% and not have good hearing can actually affect, uh, you know, your whole, your whole body and your whole health and, and overall health. Absolutely. It's such a great point. I mean, hearing loss. So if you think about the things that you do every day, you're talking with family, you're maybe going to school or going to work, you're interacting with people. And that's what keeps us connected to each other. And when you can't take part in conversations or you avoid situations because you don't want to feel embarrassed or frustrated, that changes how you feel and yeah. it can affect, you know, you can feel anxious, feel depressed, um, feel isolated. And we're seeing that today. I can't remember the statistics now, but especially during COVID, yeah. there's just more feelings of being separated, isolated, depressed. Um, so yeah. that's definitely in terms of mental health, mm -hmm. but also if you have hearing loss, it can be a sign of other conditions. So for example, diabetes, cardiovascular health, they can also show up on your audiogram. Oh, wow. So it, yeah. So it's great to have your hearing screened or tested, especially if you have any hearing concerns, but in general, it's part of your overall health and well-being. You know, I never realized that, you know, it could be a symptom of something like a, you know, to a root cause, something in your body that it's going on. I didn't, you know, I, I always, you know, I think most people too, you know, when you think of hearing loss, sometimes you just, you know, you associate it with elders and you don't realize that hearing loss could be at any time in your life. And it could be caused by other things, you know, other than, you know, having a problem or, you know, something causing your, your, your hearing to decline and stuff like that. So that was a very good point. You know, I, I never realized. Now, do you see nowadays a lot of younger individuals coming in with hearing loss? Because, you know, we were talking earlier and you were saying, you know, how this new generation, you know, uh, studies have shown that they're going to have a lot of problems with hearing loss due to a lot of different reasons. Can we talk a little about that? Yeah, absolutely. Such a great point. So right now we estimate that somewhere between one in 10 and one in eight Americans has some degree of hearing loss. And like you pointed out in the younger generations, millennials and Gen Z, we are seeing an increased number of people with noise induced hearing loss. And some of this is because of, you know, the devices that we're wearing, the headphones, it's fine to wear headphones, but if you turn the volume all the way up, um, especially if you're out in a loud setting, it's easy to do. Right. Unfortunately, the FDA doesn't regulate that maximum volume, and you're usually going to be at a damaging level where wow. you can start doing damage to your ears, 
um, within seconds to minutes. So I know when I was in graduate school, we would bring in students from the, the university and we'd say, hey, bring in your headphones, um, listen to your headphones at a volume you like to. And then we put it up on a mannequin where we could test the levels. Yeah. And they were often 110, 105 decibels, which wow. can cause hearing damage in yeah. minutes. And if you're doing that regularly, it can really uh, cause hearing loss. You know, you would think that, you know, because the FDA has to be aware of this, you would think that they would put some restrictions and, and regulations to different companies that are selling these products, you know, different headphones and stuff. Because, you know, if you're given, you know, especially, you know, a teenager or a young child, you know, uh, headphones, they're not really going to, you know, when we were young, we, we, we were fearless. We didn't think anything was going to happen to us. So, you know, they're going to put it all the way up. Most likely they just want to, you know, seclude themselves, you know, and just, you know, especially this new generation, they like to isolate themselves a lot and, you know, they're going to seclude themselves from, from the rest of the world. And, you know, one way of doing that is by putting up the headphones and just focusing on whatever they're listening to. So, you know, I think, you know, they, they really should, you know, they really should have, uh, take I think you take take it more seriously because you know we're gonna have you know there could be a lot of damage that could be done if you know young generate our younger generation continues to listen to music that is you know at a level where it's harmful for your hearing definitely and we are seeing also so for example Apple is starting to they have this health data that you'll see I don't know if you use an iPhone but um mm -hmm. anyone who does has probably seen the health data you can see your steps it yeah. will also give you some information about how loud your average listening level is and it's reasonably accurate um they do if you go into the settings there mm -hmm. are ways where you can turn on a feature or reduce the maximum output so yes. even turn it all the way up, you'll never take it to that dangerous level. So it takes a little bit of awareness. And like you said, I would love to see the FDA thinking about it, but I think people are starting to think about it. Yeah. Because the World Health Organization is also estimating like a billion young people, you know, in the coming decades will have hearing loss from noise. Oh, wow. Alone, which is That's crazy. I mean, so many people. Yeah. Yeah. I know for my, I have an Apple phone and an Apple watch. And I remember I went into a restaurant just recently and after a certain time, a band came in and they started playing and my watch went off and so, told me that, you know, the level of, of noise was too high and that I ne needed to, you know, I needed to leave and go to a, a, a setting where there was less noise. And I mm -hmm. thought that, you know, that was the first time I, I ever saw that. And I was like, wow, you know, like it, it recognized that I was in an environment where the music was loud and it was recognizing that it was past like a certain amount of decibels. It was too loud, you know you know, for, for your hearing. So I, I thought that was pretty cool, you know, that it, it actually recognized that. Yeah. I think it's great that we're starting to pay attention to that and, um, that it can tune in and, and, and tell you, Hey, that's too loud. Um, and generally if people ask me, you know, well, how do I know if it's too loud? Like, let's say I don't have it turned on the limit. Um, noise canceling headphones are a little bit different because they're going to tune out your environment. Yeah. But if you're turning it up to a level with regular headphones where you can't hear somebody who's about an arm's length from you, mm -hmm. it's too loud. Right. I think, you know, I'm, I'm wondering like if we're, for parents, you know, that have younger children, is there a certain type of conversation, some tips that you would give them to, you know, make their children more aware of the uh, importance of, of not blaring the headphones mm -hmm. and, you know, and what imp important factors that they, they should know and maybe teach their children as well. Yeah, it's great to think about that already at a young age because it is also routine and habit. When we're used to turning the volume all the way up, that becomes normal. And that, that's kind of what we're we're looking for when we listen to music. Yeah. So if young children can start listening at a safer level and they're used to that, that can also help. Then their preference for listening is also different. There are um, so like I said, that 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 arm's length distance is a good guideline. There are also products out there or features that will allow parents to, you know, turn on um, a safe listening level or headphones oh, that are, yeah, headphones that are actually designed for that, where they won't exceed specifically for kids. Like they won't go above 80 decibels or, you know, certain, certain levels. 
Because I really think that's important because, you know, yeah. kids aren't going to care, you know, and until they get older and then all of a sudden they're not, you know, they're saying, what'd you say? What'd you say? You know, and then, all you know, that problems begin and then they start to panic. And that's usually, you know, sadly, mm -hmm. I think that's what in, in, in our society, people don't really pay attention to a lot of things until it actually becomes a problem when we really need to think about prevention and what we could do before anything in our lives health-wise becomes a problem it's like protecting ourselves looking at all aspects of our overall health and saying okay what can i do to protect myself so i don't have any problems or you know additional illnesses or any illnesses you know before they start you know and i think you know that's the, the main thing is really trying to you know, put out a plan so you stay healthy and not wait, you know, live this unhealthy life and then, you know, wait till a problem occurs and then you're like panicking, oh my God, what should I do? You know, blah, 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 blah. And then you run into all these different doctors, but you know, the problem is already there and now you have to deal with it, you know? Right. Yeah. And, and it's like, you know, with sunscreen, we think about our skin because we see it and we want to now most of us are aware of, okay, if you spend a lot of time in the sun, you need to be wearing sunscreen and, you know, moms and, and parents will think about that for their kids because yeah. kids are thinking about that. Right. Um, but, you know, hearing is invisible in, the, in that yeah. sense, but we still need to think about it. And preventing it is much easier than, unfortunately, right now, we don't have a way to restore those hair cells in the inner right. ear. So once the damage is done, you know, we can work on hearing aids or, or other things um, to help with communication or, you know, tinnitus, we don't have a way to cure that currently. Yeah. We have management strategies, but tinnitus is also um, a side effect or a sign of damage in the auditory pathway. And, right. um, you know, some people really suffer from that. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because I was actually thinking about it before you said it, you know, because, you know, certain things you can, you can fix, you get the flu, you know, you can take, you know, medication and just sleep it off and, you know, and a couple of weeks you're feeling back to normal. But when it comes to things like that, your sensories and your hearing, you know, once it's damaged, it's damaged. We don't have mm -hmm. anything right now that can restore our hearing once it's at it's damaged. So we really, when there, when it comes to certain parts of our body, we we really need to, you know, take care of them and, you know, really, uh, you know, learn what's good and what's not good and, and give ourselves limitations. Everyone hates limitations, but sometimes we have to have put limitations in our life if we want to stay healthy. And we want, especially with our hearing, you don't want to be one of those people that are screaming across the room and everybody's like, stop screaming, you know, and I'm like, they're like, I'm not screaming, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's definitely easier to to prevent um, than it is to to treat if we don't have to. Now, some people are born with hearing loss, and um, that's of course uh, different. Yes. Um, yeah, and there are things we can do, obviously, to help people with hearing loss. But if we can prevent it from happening, that that's great too. Yeah, I've known people that have have been born with hearing loss, and they actually came down with other conditions like diabetes and and stuff like that. So, like you were mentioned before, they probably were interrelated, you know, because they were born with the diabetes, and you know, and they also experienced hearing loss also. So they were dealing with two different problems at the same time, mm -hmm. but they did have the hearing aids, and you know, they were able to restore their hearing through through using hearing aids. Now we probably have a large society that uses hearing aids. And I know now you, you they're selling them over the counter. Is there a difference between over the counter buying hearing aids and actually going to a, a doctor and actually getting hearing aids in, you know, from a doctor's office? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. And it's really timely now. Um, just this past October, the FDA approved the over the counter um, hearing aids. Uh, available on the market. And people ask me this question a lot. So yes, there's definitely a difference. And over-the-counter devices will work for a certain group of people, but not for others. So right. to tell you what that means. So somebody with mild to moderate hearing loss um, over age 18, so not children, um, not a big difference between ears. So if you had no hearing in one ear, but you hear well in the other, that's not an option for you. Um, if you have any ear issues, like if you've had surgeries to the ear, if you have chronic ear infections, if you have active drainage, that sort of thing, you don't want to think about that option. 
And for older individuals, they need to have good dexterity. So they're comfortable Mm -hmm. doing things on their own, feeling comfortable, you know, reading directions and then being able to to do those things independently. Right. Also being able to use an app because most of these devices, you'll adjust volume and do other control adjusting with the phone. Oh, really? That's amazing. Yep. So it's it's for those people, adults, ages, or over 18, um, with mild to moderate hearing loss, decent dexterity, and then some independence and able to use an app. Because I know for me, like I have reading glasses and a lot of people buy reading glasses over the counter. But when I went to get my eyes checked, I had two different prescriptions. Like I had one eye was stronger than the other eye. So I actually needed two different types of lenses in my reading glasses where you can't get that over the counter if you buy reading glasses in the store. So sometimes I, I feel it's better actually to get checked and get analyzed by a doctor or a professional before you, you know, resort to over the counter. Yeah, I would agree. So um, it's best to have a hearing test before you go out and just try these devices on your own, even though technically you're able to do that. Getting a hearing test lets you know, um, do I actually have mild to moderate hearing loss? Because if you have more or if you have a flat moderate hearing loss, you're you're not going to benefit from that yeah. device. Usually a hearing evaluation is covered by your insurance. So there's not going to be a a cost with that generally. Of course, you want to check with your insurance, but um, Mm -hmm. like for Medicare, if you have a um, physician's referral, that will be covered. So get the hearing test and then find out, you know, is this even an option for me? Or should I be seeing a professional? Some people just prefer to have a professional kind of help guide them through that process. Right. Because there is an adjustment period with wearing hearing aids too. At first, it's like when you are sitting in a dark room and the lights come on, everything's too bright, you know? So we might need to start out a little bit dimmer and then gradually gradually adjust to what you need, um, things like that. And anybody who's had a complex history, ear-related history, they should always go to see an audiologist because, you know, somebody with a surgical ear, like a mastoid cavity or um, chronic ear infections, things like that, um, there's there's other things we need to consider. Now, I know some people get self-conscious. They don't want other people to know that they have a hearing aid in their ear, but I heard that they're making them really good now where they're they're not really as noticeable, right? Yeah. So there are a lot of options in terms of the styles of hearing aids. And yeah, there are, there are really small ones that can go in the ear or even like it's called Lyric. Those Mm -hmm. are completely invisible. Um, They go in your ear canal and then you just wear them. um, And then you'll see an audiologist um, who can replace them at set points, like every um, certain number of weeks. Um, And then the ones that are worn behind the ear nowadays, they're actually pretty inconspicuous. People try them on in the office and they're like, oh, I didn't realize this is so small. Um, yeah. Especially if you're a, a woman with longer hair, it goes behind here and you almost don't see it. Um, oh, wow. So that's yeah. really good because I know a lot of people, I knew one gentleman, he he had hearing aids, but he never wanted to wear them. This was going back about 10 years ago mm-hmm. and he never wanted to wear them because he was so self-conscious that people would see them. So I think that's great that now they have so many different you know styles that you can go and use and you, no one would even know, notice that you have mm-hmm. a hearing aid in your ear. That's yeah, what's... definitely. So, and I think that's something where people will say to, oh, I don't want to wear hearing aids because they'll make me feel old, but it's yeah. like, well, but also you want to think like when you're saying what all the time, like, how does that make you seem? Also, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> or so, like my mother screaming across the room and she doesn't even realize it. <laughs> yeah. And I do hope that, you know, over time, I'm sure the technology will get smaller and um, less noticeable too. They're all already working on um, invisible cochlear implants, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe over time, as it's becoming more normal for people to, to get help, Hopefully right. stigma will change too, because that is something that keeps people f- from, from seeking help. Yeah. Um, but you know, like glasses, we don't think poorly of someone who wears glasses, you know, that's exactly. just their, their vision is what it is and they wear the glasses and you know, that's fine. Um, so I hope that the attitudes and, and stigma will change too. Now, if someone doesn't treat their hearing loss problem and they let it linger, can it become worse? It can in a sense. So 
hearing loss, like if age related, um, over time, most of us will develop some degree of hearing loss at some point in our life. Um, so that is not going to change when you wear a hearing aid, mm -hmm. but we know that it, it can impact your cognitive health. So oh, okay. if, yeah. So the world health organization has found that hearing loss is one of the probably um, mo one of the more significant modifiable risk factors for cognitive decline. Oh, wow. Um, I never know yeah. that. That's very interesting. And it's, it is, especially it makes a big difference. Cause like we were talking about, it can impact how much you can socialize and how right. connected you are, which can then affect your, um, you know, depression, mental health, all of that. So it has trickle down um, factors associated with it. And we know that people who um, get hearing aids earlier on, let's say before they develop cognitive decline, yeah. they tend to use their brain more, which helps to preserve all those connections, keep things intact, and then potentially slow cognitive decline versus somebody who already has, let's say, mild or moderate cognitive decline, wearing hearing aids at that point is not going to have the same impact. Um, so early in intervention is always better. Yeah. And, you know, keeping the connections going in the brain, um, that's what we really want to keep strong also. I was just curious because when when they were doing um, dementia and Alzheimer's, um, and one of the things they said is that we really need to stimulate our brain and increase our cognitive function where we all, you know, doing things, crossword puzzles, going mm -hmm. out and just, you know, work in our mind. Now, if you if you are losing connection with your hearing and your, your cognitive skills are declining, does that make you more susceptible to Alzheimer's or dementia? Do you know? Yeah, that's a great question. Right now, the research is still, it's not totally clear the connection. We can't necessarily say this causes that. Right. But what we can say though is, um, so with hearing loss, when you think about someone with hearing loss, or if you, let's say you don't have hearing loss, imagine you're wearing earplugs and you're trying to talk with people. Yeah. You're using more mental resources just to get the words people say. So you're using less cognitive resources to, for higher up processing, for thinking about, oh, you know, well, this person said this, that reminds me of that. And, you know, using different parts of your brain. Yeah. And so it just changes the amount of cognitive resources that you have available to fully take part in the conversation. Right. Um, and so we know that that bit of processing that you're using, that can really play a role if somebody has dementia, um, you know, creating memories. Like when you hear something clearly, you're able to create a more complete memory. Right. Have more function to be able exactly. to do that. Yeah. And so you could see how that might, oh, okay. Somebody said this, but it wasn't totally clear. So I'm a little foggy. I don't really have right. a memory of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's definitely true. The clearer you, you focus on something and you can pay attention and you can hear it, see it, understand it, it, even not even see it, just, just hear, you know, cause even blind people have great memory because they're using their other sensories. So, it, you know, if we can hear what's going on and we are using the sensories that we have available to us, the memory will be more clearer and that will, you know, help us, you know, and not, you know, in a sense, you know, affect us in, in, in when it comes to Alzheimer's and dementia when, you know, cause their, their memories, when some of the symptoms are memory distortion, you know, mm -hmm. and long-term memory, short-term memory and things like that. So that's a very interesting fact to, you know, consider is that, you know, we really need to, you know, we have more focus and better, you know, you know, understanding of what's going on if we have our hearing available to us. Absolutely. It's all connected. Yes. Everything's connected. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Now, if we needed some tips, like I would love for you to give us a few tips for parents, you know, mm -hmm. that have children right now and that they see them on the headphones all the time. And then maybe we can give, you know, some tips to people who are a little bit older that, you know, might suspect that maybe their hearing is declining mm -hmm. what they should do. So if you don't mm -hmm. mind, like first, we'll talk about the children and, and what, what it should, you know, a couple of, of important factors that parents should probably take into consideration. Yeah, I think with young children, um, of course, it's going to depend on the age of the child, but um, with young children, just instilling good habits. 
So thinking about, okay, let's think about, you know, what's a good level, what's a safe level to listen. Okay. Yeah. We're going to turn this on. And then just so they have an understanding of what that even means. Um, then maybe choosing headphones or headsets that do have those limitation features again, so that, you know, what you're used to the level you're used to listening to mm -hmm. that becomes a habit. And, you know, you don't have that in your mind. Oh, I'm going to listen like really loud where I can feel the vibrations. Yeah. That thing. Um, and then if you, if your child's older, let's say teenager or, you know, um, young adult, um, mm -hmm. just talking about things that you can do, uh, with the Apple data or with, um, choosing those settings on your phone to limit the volume of the headphones, um, thinking about the one arm's length and being able to still hear your surroundings. Those are good tips. Um, and then with adults, so I would recommend that people get a hearing screening at least by age 50. But of course, if there are any hearing concerns, getting it checked sooner is always a good idea. Right. Um, but age 50, and I would love if, if physicians would also, you know, recommend to their patients, hey, um, let's get your hearing screened or checked. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Because you don't hear that all the time. Yeah, exactly. And it's part of your overall health and well-being. And then, you know, going forward, okay, I, my hearing is normal now. Um, you know, I'm going to get it checked every five years or every couple of years, every three years, just to see how it changes over time. If you do have hearing loss, then you catch it earlier in the process and you can decide, okay, do I want to look at some intervention options or gee, I need to think about protecting my hearing because you know, I like to go to those concerts or I like to do this. Um, right. So you have options and you can yeah. be proactive. I think that's great. I really think that's great. Now, do you have a website people could go to? Yeah. So you, I have a blog. Um, it's just my name. It's amysorrow.com and the sorrow is spelled S-A-R-O-W. Um, I'm also on the Forbes Health Advisory Board. So you'll see, um, you know, you could find my, my profile there. Um, and I also do some work with soundly.com where we help educate people about their hearing health, um, hearing aid options, hearing protection, all of that. So you can find me on any of those places. That's great. I, you know, I, I think it's so important that people get well educated and the fact that you have a blog, I think is even better. And if people want to contact you, is there, what's the best way for people to contact you? Cause after hearing this, they may have a question to ask you and yeah. what's a great way to contact you. Yeah. You can certainly send me a message through my blog. Um, or yeah, if you, you can reach out to soundly.com. We also have a team that can help answer any specific questions there. Um, so either of those ways is it works. Oh, that's amazing. I'm so glad you came on the show today just to educate our society, because especially nowadays where, you know, one, you know, self-esteem is a very important issue. People get self, you know, conscious about wearing hearing aids and they really need to understand the importance of it. And we went over that today. And the fact that we have a generation that constantly has headphones and earphones on, you know, all the time, they really need to understand the importance of not blaring it in their ears and the, the consequences that could follow. So thank you so much for coming on the show and, and sharing this information with us. I think it's very valuable and I, I, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. It was a great discussion. Oh, thank you. You have a great day. Thanks. You too.